Antonio here live at Socialite. This is one of my idols I get to interview on Love This City. Dan Luck, what is going on? You're an entrepreneur, you own like 21 companies. I think it's 22. 21, so, 20, I stopped counting after 20. Tell me a little bit more about you. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some people don't know the power of who you are yet. <laughs> my name is uh, Dan Locke. I've been an entrepreneur all my life. Started my first business when I was in high school. And I always tell people my profession is I'm an entrepreneur. I build companies and grow companies for a living. But my passion is actually teaching. So I teach entrepreneurship through my books, through my podcasts, through, I have a group in Vancouver called Vancouver Entrepreneurs Group. So yeah, it's, um, I see myself as an entrepreneur, also a teacher as well. So you know the biggest challenge I find, because I own two companies, and I find when, it's not the failures, or it's getting back up. How is the mindset, or what, how can you educate us on what's the mindset? Mm. During my talk, I talk about that I failed at 13 businesses before having my first success. Um, there was a gentleman asking me, well, Dan, how, how do you keep going when you fail? What motivates you? I wish I could tell you that I'm so motivated and this and that. Quite frankly, just at the time, through my business failures, I was $150,000 in debt. So if I know if I just get a job to pay that off, it would take forever. Okay, like it, it could not be done. So I have $150,000 in debt, and I had to pay it off, and I'm unemployable. So the only way I could go is make sure that the next business works. And I just kept on going and going. And I mean, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist. After you make enough mistakes, you figure a few things out, and then it works. So let me ask you, because everyone says you don't need money to make money. But I, my, my feelings are different. Depending on the business, it may not be the case. But when it does, what is the maybe the steps or some advice you can give to people when they do need some money or is it just work hard and it might take you three years because you're using your own money mm. or is it really smart to really go for an investor and if so which one good first I always say if you can't make money without money you can't make money with money so yes yeah, sometimes in certain businesses like tech research or whatever industry you're in maybe it takes money but that doesn't have to be your own money so you could get investors uh, if you have a but investors they want to invest something with a proven track record. I'm an investor, so I get it. So we want a good management team, we want a, something that's in demand, but the key thing is, as investors, what we look for is someone with skin in the game. They're hungry. That You know what, if you come to me and say, hey, you know, Dan, I've got this great idea, I, I want half a million from you. Well, what have you put into it? But if you say, you know what, I mortgaged my house, I put my everything I've got into it, I've worked hard on this, and I can see you're hungry, and the idea is actually solid, and you can grow, yeah, I'll put some money into it. What about the stigma or the ideas when they've invested two, three hundred thousand dollars and it's making good money, but they're at a loss. How do you overcome that challenge with investors or even in your own belief? Is that s standard in the game? Should people know it's the norm? Y yes, I mean, the, the best time to look for investors is when you don't need the money. Not like, okay, I've got 60 days and I'm running out of cash. Yeah. Now I need some money, like you need, you know, blood in your vein. Yeah. That's the worst time. Yeah. So it tells me that could be there is a marketing issue. It could be a business model issue. You should solve that before you approach investors. Because if you do get an investor during those times, even if you could get one, they would squeeze you. Yeah. They would say, "What? You give me 20% of the company? I know you got 60 days. I'll wait till 10 days left. I want, I will give you the money, but I will take 90% of the company. Then what are you gonna do? So don't put yourself in that situation." And what are some other advice on really maybe some suggestions that they got to do in this day and age? Because you brought up some good points there. Yeah. Like the 1%, like people take your coaching and don't even follow up. Yeah. Like what else would you recommend along those lines? I would say in this thing, it's to find a, find a mentor. I have over 2,000 books in my library. I've read 2,000 books. I have been to hundreds of workshops and conferences. They help. The books help, the workshops help. But I'm where I am today because of my mentors. So throughout my life, you know, I don't have a big ego when it comes to learning. I will learn from any, anyone that's been there and done that, I will learn from them. What else are you going to be doing in your career that can apply to the, just another suggestion out there? I think with going back to what I said during the talk, is you, you have to focus on yourself first. Save yourself before you try to save the world. Yeah. That got to make your business profitable. Make it make, it make money. Because then, now you can do something for others. But you got to be... Sometimes you have to be incredibly selfish so you can be incredibly generous. How can people reach out to get your mentor programs? How do they hit you up? I don't have a mentor program, but they could go to www.danlok.com, danlok.com. I have 200 videos on YouTube, I have a podcast, everything is for free. All the education that I do is all free. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. You.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye.